And welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's an opportunity for you to call in and talk with us about liberty issues, about things that are going on here in the state of Alaska, locally in the Fairbanks North Star Borough, or even with your next door neighbor. If uh, somebody is encroaching on your God-given rights, or if you are ceding them to the state, that's the kind of thing we like to talk about here. I'm Steve Floyd, and the uh, you kind of call me the monkey behind the machine, so to speak. I just make sure that the buttons get pushed. Joining me in the studio today from Bighorn Enterprises, we have Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. And from Four North Tactical, we have Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. Now, Dave Giesel, our normal uh, third wheel to this uh, particular arrangement, is uh, in an undisclosed location this morning. Out of the country, as a matter of fact, so... Mm-hmm. It's off on international affairs. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, what's on your mind this morning, Josh? Uh, quite a few things, but uh, don't know really where to start them out with. Aaron and I have had this discussion several times about um, rock and roll. <laughs> Are we listening to 98 1? No, sorry, that's my ringtone. <laughs> We've had this discussion several times about um, liberty and uh, revolution and all this and that and different people that we that you hear, any conversation, whatever. Uh, someone wanted, well, we need a revolution. Well, we need to go back to the way it was. So, and Aaron and I have talked about this several times of who really knows what the way it was. And if you did have a quote-unquote, revolution, what would be the result of it? Do we even know, are we intellectual enough, if I can use that word, are we smart enough to even go back to the original intent of the Declaration of Independence, the original intent of the Constitution of the United States? Are, Are we so far gone that... We can never go back there. You'd have to rewind yourself back about 400 years and see where the idea and concept came from in the first place. I mean, what Josh is talking about is so many people talk about what we need to go back to, what we need to become. Now, never what we need to become, sorry, but rather what we need to go back to. And um, But nobody even really can grasp where it came from in the first place. It's only been... Um, the thought of natural rights has only been progressing for about 400 years probably is all right. Yeah, pretty much. And it took and, about 200 years of that progression to end up with something like our Constitution. And I think you hit it right on the head perfectly when you said, we always talk about what we should go back to. We never discuss what we should, what should we be looking forward to. Right, if um, you just have to look at what the founders were fighting for they weren't fighting to go back to something now they weren't getting their natural rights as englishmen is what their grievance was but they didn't regress and go backwards right they pushed 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 and good thing because they didn't um fight to be subjects of the king we see um you know we hear the words that uh Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty, and Matt, or Adam said that uh, once liberty is lost, it can never be regained. The point of those things are you have to constantly be in, i got to say this right, your mind frame must always be in revolution. Your mind frame must always be to progress liberty. Your mind frame must always be to push towards liberty. And we've lost that. At this point, we should have been at a point where we had basically zero government instead of an all-encompassing government. Yeah, we started with uh, this limited federal government. It should have been gone by now. We should have been so wrapped up in our liberties and our individual freedoms and our markets and our ability to exchange with each other that we had no use for it anymore. But instead, we've regressed back to... Close to annihilation, I'd say. Mm. And just look at examples of a um, certain fellow who ran for senator last year. So many people were wrapped up, or two years ago, I guess it was now, mm. a year and a half, were so wrapped up with the change he was going to bring, the constitutional scholar himself. And did he even understand liberty one bit? 
Aaron and I opposed him very much so for one particular reason. Claiming to be a constitutional scholar, he denied the fact that we had the right of jury nullification. He saw no part in that in our experiment in the United States. He saw no part of that in our liberties. And how can you be a constitutional scholar, someone who's going to take us back to the way it was supposed to be, and not believe in jury nullification? The thing, the main thing that started all natural rights and the concept of it in the first place. Well, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, uh, Spooner. Jean Locke. Jean Locke. <laughs> they Jean-Luc all, Picard? They Wait, told no. us over and over how important that <laughs> our liberties were based on having the ability to nullify a law that the government made. The people had the right to do that. Otherwise, I mean, I can't remember exactly what Jefferson said, but he said that was the constraints on the government. It would be an absurdity to require the jury John Adams to yeah. prosecute somebody against their own conscience. John Adams, right. And Jefferson said that it was um basically it was our duty, it was our way of making the forcing the government to follow the constitution was jury nullification. And we've lost that. Now we have people that we support and clamber about and, oh, tea parties, this and that, for people that we think are going to take us back to the way it was supposed to be who don't even understand it. Josh, don't bash the tea party. So (laughs) if we can't understand, if we don't even understand (laughs) what we were, we're never going to be able to go forward to what we should be. Most people's argument when you say, um, if we... Forget about going back. Let's go forward. They say, well, that's a good starting point. And, I mean, you got a point there, but it's still regressive. It's the wrong direction. Well, what is the argument to hear most often for people saying that we need government in the first place? It's it's to restrain the actions of evil people, right? The reason that's why, the only argument. The reason why we need laws really? is because there are bad people out there that are going to do bad things, and we need the laws to keep them in line. And that that is the and then and most reasonable people say okay well that makes sense we need to have laws against murder we need to have laws against burglary and theft and we need to have laws against rape and spies and and but but what, what a lot of people Bassaults. I don't think really grasp is that those laws those basic laws I mean we could probably whittle them down to say I don't know maybe ten or so but those basic laws come down to something that's written on the heart of every man. I think most people understand on a basic level you should not kill another person. And the laws don't stop somebody from doing it. That's the big Exactly, joke exactly. Just because there's a law on the books that says you, should not, you shouldn't murder somebody isn't going to stop somebody from going out and murdering. What's going to stop them is the, either the fear that when they get caught they are going to forfeit their own life. Retribution. Exactly. Or some kind of a... Um, a reward, possibly, of saying, "Look, if I if I manage to not kill this person, then we're going to be able to be good neighbors eventually. There, there's going to be a reward somewhere down the line." You know, sometimes I feel that way with my own children. Well, okay, I know there's going to be a future reward here, so I'm going to just hold back. Well, um, and there never was uh, at the forming of this country. There never was a thought of law. Anyways, we we didn't start this thing. We they didn't start this thing to make laws. Anyways. Madison said that a just government was simply to protect the private property of the individual. That was it. Jefferson said the same things. The only reason we have, the only reason we decide to have this government is to protect our Mm -hmm. private property. How'd that work out? Yeah, didn't work out very long at all. Well, and that's because once once you have the, the, the framework of power in place, other people can come forward and say, hey, there ought to be a law for X, Y, or Z. Hey, I, I really feel unsafe when I see people out there talking on their phones while they're driving. There ought to be a law to make that to, to make it so that they would get in trouble if somebody else sees, you know, if, you know, if, you, know. And you don't start seeing those things until they started to cede the power of force to the government. I don't remember who, I just read this a little while ago and I can't remember who said it, but it was along the lines of, I mean, if you're one that says we need a law against that, then you hold your liberty at very low mm-hmm. value. Yeah, absolutely. If you think everything needs a law, then you must not think that your you liberty needs a You wouldn't say that, that if much. your kids were out doing crack cocaine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 
as a callback to one of our free, previous callers on, on the previous week. Uh, well, I mean, but fast forward to where we are today. It has been a gradual process of people ceding liberty, of people allowing the government or in some cases directly asking the government to do things that, that the government in the United States was never intended to do. But we see it here at a local level as well. If you look at the, the smoke issue here in the borough and how many people are, are saying, look, get out of my smokestack. Leave me alone. All I'm trying to do is heat my home. And just because my neighbor doesn't like me, you're going to make it a law that they can go down there and have an anonymous complaint against me for violating your smoke code so that you can come and find me. Or even worse, they um, levy taxes on the people and take you of your private property where government's one role was to ensure private property. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a battle of it's really gonna come it's come down to the battle of the minds. It really is. Who is going to prevail is gonna be the one that changes the minds of people. Mises said Lugwood von Mises said no one can find a way out for himself if society is sweeping towards destruction. Therefore, everyone in his own interest must thrust himself vigorously into the intellectual battle. No one can stand aside with unconcern. The interest of everyone hangs on the results. So this battle isn't a battle of armed revolution. Mm -hmm. It isn't a battle of the vote. It's a battle of intellectualism. And yet how often do you have people that when they get into a discussion and when they're, they're faced with something that either they don't understand or that, that makes them feel like they don't understand, they, they back away from the argument instead of pressing forward and, and forcing that other person to explain themselves. Or even worse, if you own a tactical shop and every other guy that comes in there talks about armed insurrection and what we're going to do when the government takes our guns and stuff like that, how intellectual is it to sit there and say that your, your catalyst point, your turning point, is when the government comes to take away your guns, which it, I don't see as being even a possibility in the first place. So you're willing to give up every single one of your liberties as long as the government doesn't come to take your guns. Be the best armed slaves in history. I think we already are. Yeah. You know? Well, as long as you got your 72-hour U-Haul ready to go, you're, it's, you're fine there. Or your man purse. Well, and, and how often do you hear people resort to ad hominem attacks when, they, when you get into an intellectual debate with them? When, when you get to the point and you press them and you say, now look, what you're doing here is wrong, they respond with, well, you obviously don't understand. Well, you, look, you, you must not understand how the process works. Look at how many people call here. We've been doing this for about eight months, nine months, and argue with us when uh, well, we talk about what we Steve talk for about. a year and a half. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> And what do they always do? They defend, in my mind, the indefensible. They defend the state over and over and over and over. At the same time, any any other time throughout the week, they'll call your show and trash on the state and say how evil it is, how wrong. But then when we say something about let's not have it anymore, well, then now we're evil and we're wrong. So I don't understand how people can think that we're going to ever take it back to what we had, when they won't even intellectually dismiss what's going on right now. I mean, they have to back it up. Are we so scared of living as free men and women that we have to have this government telling us what to do? Does anybody across the river there in that building understand what the founding of this country was about? Does anybody in that building across the street understand human and natural rights? I mean, real ones. There's probably one right now. That would Natalie, be Natalie who? Howard. And even at the very beginning, I was pretty upset with stuff that she did with the grandfather rights. People were saying, yes, we need it. No, we don't need grandfather rights. We have inherent property rights. I own this land. I own this property. No, you don't. Leave it alone. But yes, actually, we don't well, because yeah, we pay a tax. <laughs> In that, but if you don't boy, pay the tax, yeah. how will government exist? And how, how will we 52% have those... <laughs> percent of this community work for government? 59. You, 59. Whatever. Oh, Jeez. Two Details. <laughs> Details. Oh, well, and, and when you think about that, he, he, what are we paying for anyway with our property taxes? Those vital services like animal control and public libraries and parks and recreation. Like the parking ticket kids. They give me tickets every other day. 
No, that's you're not paying for that with your oh, borough taxes. Oh, sorry. No, that, that's <laughs> sorry. Uh, they pay for that with the kidding. fines from the parking tickets. 458-TALK sure is do. the number if you'd like to get on the program this morning. Let's go to the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? Oh, oh the person I'm about to, and you, you can correct my pronunciation on this, uh, uh, the person that, uh, 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 author that I'd like for you to discuss at some time is uh, uh, Frederick Bastiat, uh, wrote The Law. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the state has no power that the individual doesn't have. Uh, 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 it's an interesting concept. It's uh, 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 I, I like it. I, I used to buy the books, uh, you know, packs ten, twenty five, thirty years ago, and pass them out to people. Uh, uh, I just, I just, I just, I just like to hear y'all's commentary on, on, on along that line. I think we did um, several months ago. I think we actually did a show on that, didn't we? The I law, think, yeah. But uh, I'm, uh, well, I, where, where I is that? Yeah, right. of, Winston, when, when does where does the law come from? Um, uh, uh, law is. Um, uh, um, uh, are you speaking of the of the pamphlet, the law, or law in, 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 the, the, in the law with a capital L? Like okay. when when people refer to law, where does that come from? Law is a, a, a it's it, it's something that people have got together and where, in Frederick Bastiat's case, it's where uh, people have codified their right self defense. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, so that each person didn't have to to stand there and constantly defend himself. Uh, they said, "Okay, we all agree that this is of uh, of uh, uh, that this is illegal." Of uh, of uh, uh, that that it's 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 it's. I don't. I I can't speak well. So over that it. that's okay, Winston. Basically, what you're saying is that if if people get together and agree on a law. Then whatever that they they have agreed upon, then they can enforce with impunity. Is what you're saying, then, right? Um, to a certain extent, actually, the uh, 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 my belief is that the individual can do anything he wants to. Uh, but then, whenever twelve people, uh, uh, and I'm using this as a uh, uh, an accepted norm, whenever a jury tells him, "Say no for the public peace," you can't do that. In other words, each individual, all politics is local, and the individual is 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 the very smallest local thing that you can get. Uh, uh, each person should be able to nullify anything, unless a, 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 a large enough group of people say, "Well, now wait, we." we you know, for the public peace, you shouldn't do that. Well, what if what and if those you have twelve people, you know, just out of, for argument's sake, what if those twelve people decide that it's okay to kill Jews, just out of you know by by way of uh, can, you know they using your same line of argument, they've gotten together, they've decided, you know what, for the public interest, it would be best if there were not any Jews in our community. And what if the twelve <clears throat> of them, or or however many, got together and made a law that not only authorized but even required the killing of Jews would that then therefore be right uh, uh, only if they were intended on killing an individual Jew they they, 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 they couldn't pick out everybody uh, 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 you can't no, go that's why there. that's why yeah. that's why a long time ago they laid down natural rights when our founders made our uh, when they made what we have in the beginning I shouldn't say what we have today. Well, the name maybe we had in the beginning, they went and they looked at ancient law, and they looked at natural law, and they looked at common law. Ancient law would have been what the Greeks and the Romans had. Right, they right. didn't just out of nowhere pull this concept out. You have to right. understand that this concept wasn't very old. People had been subjugated for ever, for all of history. And Slavery people, is a, people is, take is a natural state, right? People take for exactly, and people take for granted what we have today. What we have today, and it is slavery, and they see it as freedom because slavery is a natural state, exactly. But they looked back to, to ancient law and to natural law and common law, and they came up with, well, to natural law and ancient law, and they came up with common law, and common law is pretty simple, and. 
that's how we came that's how we ended up with outlaws anybody that was outside of the law was an outlaw see the law is not supposed to be the thing that regulates us we're supposed to be protected by the law inside the law it's something totally different today no. to, be, ever, to uh, be an outlaw would be to somebody that's not protected by the law it would be a horrible thing at one time to be outside of the law. Now it's a horrible thing to be on the inside of the law. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is a question now for both Winston and, and Aaron here. When you're talking about common law and you're talking about the, the general agreement about what laws should be, doesn't there have to be at some point some higher law by there, which to compare? No, there, the law is pretty simple. There's contract law, which is do all you have agreed to do. I mean, it's that simple. That's a contract law. It's still valid today. That's still how every contract's written. Contract law never changed. The contract between men is to not harm each other. Right. It's very it's simple. Tort law would be to, is, in a nutshell, is your liberties end where somebody else's begin. It's that simple. Outside of those two laws, there is nothing else except for regu regulation and stifling. Right. So we've come oh, from oh. we've come from being inside the law to being outside the law. Jeff Jefferson we, said the in the victim of the law. Exactly. Yes. Thanks yeah. for the call, Winston. Jefferson said the issue today is the same as it's been throughout all of history: whether men should be allowed to govern himself or be ruled by the small elite. But how can you govern yourself if you don't have any internal compass? If if you don't have a sense of right and wrong. How can you govern yourself? Right. That was the point we made in the very beginning. Even guys like guys running for senator on a constitutional platform obviously don't even have the first idea of what it means. What is natural law? What is where does the Constitution come from? I mean, you can't just sit there and say, oh, yeah, the Constitution and not even understand anything about it. Well, and you could read it 100 times, but if you don't get how it came to be. And why it was written, who cares if you read it? And common law is named that basically because it's the common thing. It's natural. You don't have to have a moral compass to know that you shouldn't kill someone. What? You don't have to have a moral <laughs> compass to say, I can't go steal such and such. Or if you decide you're going to do that, then you reap the consequences of what you've done. Yeah, you pay the state. <laughs> yeah. Because now, the state is the ultimate victim these days, exactly. Now, all right, we've got all four of our lines on hold, and we're about a minute away from the break here at the bottom of the hour for the news. Let's see if we can squeeze in another quick call. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Are you still there? All right, we'll try the next line. Good morning. Welcome to Patreon. All right, we did manage to clear the lines. And <laughs> it's always nice when you can get everybody all riled up and then uh, drive them away from the lines at the same time. You can uh, check us out online. We've got a blog. What's the uh, the website, Josh? PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. And there's also a YouTube channel, which is Radio Free Fairbanks. Yes. On YouTube. And That's where you can sweet. listen to uh, previous shows there as well. And you can give us a call to get on hold, 458-TALK, 458-8255. We'll be back right after the Fox News here at the bottom of the hour. We can take more phone calls and continue to discuss the issue of liberty. What does it mean, anyway, to be free? Do you know what it means to be free? Are you free? Questions to consider. We'll try to get you an action point today as well as Patriot's Lament continues. I must admit, I can't explain and welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd. Joining me in the studio today, as always, is Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. And from Far North Tactical, it's uh, Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. Are we ready to go back to the phone? Yes. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, this is Ryan. Ryan, go ahead. What's on your yeah, mind today? Uh, there's a current event coming up here um, for Veterans Day. I don't know if you guys have been following it. probably have. Um, the Ron Paul March. Um, the troops are going to march on the, the White House. Have you guys heard of that? Yes. Okay. Uh, this just actually happened, uh, I think, Thursday. There's a, a letter that came out um, from top military saying that uh, they should not do this. I don't know if you've heard that. No. No, I haven't. Yeah, heard that. 
Yeah, there's a, uh, there's actually it's on YouTube. Uh, it's uh, the link to it uh, is military top brass tell troops not to march in Ron Paul rally, and it's uh, it's a pretty interesting one. And obviously, we're going to see what happens Monday. But you know, they're sticking to their guns. They're going to go and march, which they should. Well, I'm not sure I agree with you if they should, because uh, in order for our military to be what it is, it has to be independent of politics. For individuals within the military to, you know, support whoever they want to politically, that is a God-given right that they should be able to have. However, if the military, as the military, is in support of one party or one person or another, we have lost what constitutionally we are supposed to have in terms of an army that is subservient to the political chain of command. But I don't think it's the, the I don't think they're asking the army to publicly. They're not rolling down their tanks, Steve. <laughs> no, yeah, but if they're, <laughs> are they going in uniform? I mean, that that's uh, going to be an, an issue. They said they were not going to. All right. Be in uniform. I mean, and it's that same line of thinking is why we have every church in America pretending like there is no politics. Why? They're also asking, you know, veterans and non-veterans, you know, act, active and, and veterans. Active duty. It, it, I'm trying to remember who was leading that. I can't remember his name. but The gentleman I think that's heading it up is Adam uh, Kokish. Is Kokish, yep. That's right. I wonder if he's going to accidentally die. No, I don't know. There's just, there's so many, to me, there are just so many uh, dangerous things that you get into when you start talking about active duty troops supporting one politician or one party. And again, if they're doing it individually, individually without without making reference to the fact that they are army or or navy or whatever military, yeah, yeah. that that's fine. But when they're when they're pulling in the fact that hey, I'm a part of the military and I support Ron Paul, or or you know what? What if it were? I mean, flip it on the other side. What if you had troops coming forward and say, hey, I'm active duty military and I support Barack Obama? I support their right to say that. I, well, okay, flip it again. I'm active duty and I support Adolf Hitler. That's what we had in Nazi Germany. And, and I know we have an increased militarization of America and that more and more people are thinking militantly. I mean, we are heading actually, on a the, collision course with war with Iran. The war march was actually one of the very last and most reluctant things to get behind Hitler. The people massed behind him way before the army did. Now, uh, Hitler made a point to build up the SS as big and as powerful as he possibly could to always be able to keep the Wehrmacht in check. From the ver- from the very word go, he feared him. As he should have. As did Stalin fear his generals. All right, thanks for the call. Appreciate that. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, and welcome to Patriots Lament. All right, we do have a prank caller this morning, folks, so as you keep trying to call, and we do have somebody trying to jam the lines, we'll try to get to your phone calls as quickly as possible. Why is, why is it always tyrants that fear their generals? Well, I look at Julius Caesar. Why did he fear his people? Good um, morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, yeah, uh... Coherent, right, uh, and what it boils down to, and that means, and coherent means understanding uh, with value uh, to that, and also that uh, uh, there's a double standard there that, that you can't go down in your uniform and, and march on something. Uh, I don't. You should be able to. That's a freedom. Uh, you you know that's like saying that. Uh, uh, the religion con, uh, of contraception that's going around, uh, you know, that's the invasion of the religion. Well, isn't that the same thing with uh, uh, saying that you can't do this because you're a military member? What's the difference, though? I mean, uh, do people in the Catholic Church or in any other church are not in, entrusted with the arms and the protection of the country? Are they? I mean, how, no, how, but, how many how many priests can, have you seen that are are you're, you're, armed to the you're teeth? You're twisting it, and, and it's a, it's about the freedom. As individuals, they still have the freedom, but when they put on that uniform, they are representing the power and the might of the U.S. military. And it is so, in my mind, it is so dangerously close to a coup d'état that I I I think that we need to take a step back, and I think that the top brass is correct in urging the active duty military not to participate as military members in any march. You know, to, to go out there, even if they're not in uniform, to say, hey, I'm part of the military and I support candidate X, Y, or Z. 
it's 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 that's an act of intimidation. Do, that's not what they are. Hmm. I'm not sure. Well, I, I, I don't think they're going to. The other caller said they weren't going in uh, uniform. So I think we're all right. All right. We'll keep an eye on it, though. Four, five, eight. Talk is the number we go to the hotline. Good morning. Who's this? Hi, this is Josh. Josh, good morning. Hello. Hi, I heard some other caller earlier today talk about Bastiat, and there's another really impressive uh, French philosopher guy named Etienne de Laboutie, and um, he wrote a, a little essay called The Politics of No Obedience, or Politics of Obedience, excuse me, and um, his whole thing, this is in, this is in, uh, in specific interest to Aaron's customers, the ones who want to do a violent overthrow, but Etienne de, de Laboutie talked about how... Um, Tyrants only have any kind of authority because people let them do it. You know, there's no magical powers. You know, Obama doesn't have the ability to summon armies from the sea or call down to fire or anything. He's just a guy who a lot of people listen to. And um, fighting with him will never win because you're fighting against everyone who gives him support. So ultimately, um, the way you kind of fight the system is you just kind of withdraw consent and you don't let it, don't let it control your life, don't let it back away. So how do you withdraw you know, consent? Do you not pay taxes? Do you not vote? Do you how many how do you do that? I'd say not voting is certainly a start, um, which a lot of people already don't do. You know, a lot more people than people realize. But um and taxes, I don't know. If you want to end up in prison, that's the way you want to fight the system, that's one another thing. But eventually, I mean if everyone stopped paying taxes one year, you know, the end of the whole thing, you know. So. Yeah, and going to jail doesn't really do you much good either. Right. You're not uh well you can be free in your mind, I guess, but it doesn't do much good for your posterity or even mm-hmm. your own self. Certainly doesn't help your family get by during hard times. He's got times. a good point, though. I mean, the, the whole thing, this whole thing is wrapped around our consent. The only reason that we are in the state that we are in is because we have consented to let it happen. The only reason you have a borough government across over there that keeps constantly trying to take away your wood stove is because we consent to let it happen. And that, that's an excellent point, too, because um, I remember when Josh was talking about uh, wood stove cops coming into people's houses and removing them, I heard that around my workplace. A lot of people were really nervous about that. Like, they're all anti-wood stove until I thought about the wood stove cops ripping these things out of people's walls and leaving homes all frozen. So that really scares people. Well, here, you know what? And, and I know you don't, I, I know you're advocating for not voting, and I, and I appreciate that. But one of the ways in which you can keep them in line is, for instance, this, uh, they just passed another ordinance on Thursday, what was it, last Thursday, a week ago, mm-hmm. in which now they will go in there and enforce opacity standards. They will it, levy fines. They will basically come in and regulate what type of device you can, which is in direct violation of the thing that we passed two years ago in uh, 2010, which is the whole point is that they can, by borough law and actually by state law, go in and you, our, our voter initiatives are only good for two years. Right. So what we need, if you want to keep them in check, is to go out and get a whole bunch of people to sign a, a petition to get that same restriction back on there that the borough may not pass any law regulating uh, home heating devices or levying fines or anything else like that. And that will bind them for another two years, just like we have to do every two years on the tax cap. Well, no, but that requires voting. Spooner had an interesting theory on that of basically voting for self-protection. Basically, the only time you had the, the only time I think, and he didn't even justify it really, he just said if you want to justify voting, then basically voting to protect your property would be about the only thing that he could see right. as a proper way to go about it. Unfortunately, you just keep propagating the system every time you go down there and do that because they're never going to stop they're not going to stop but how long before the borough has police powers how long is going to take us to devote themselves the powers eventually which is mind-boggling to me that we fear them so much we've come so far from 230 years ago we have a local government that has no police powers and we're so scared of them we're so scared to violate any of their little rules. Yeah. Thanks for the call, Josh. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning. And welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? All right. Thank you for calling, Jammer. And uh, if you would have the, the courtesy, perhaps, of staying on the line so we can talk with you, that'd be lovely. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Yeah, is that me? It might be. Depends on what your name is. Okay, my name is Dwayne. I'm sorry, this is a Dwayne free zone. I'm joking, Dwayne. Go ahead. What's on your mind? <laughs> no, uh, maybe maybe that's what uh, everybody needs, just a, 
uh, get their attention. Maybe a revolution or saying, hey, we're not going to take this anymore. You know, we're tired of everybody telling us, you know, what we can burn and what we can't do or our religion or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, we we do know what you're saying, but did you hear what, what Aaron and, and Josh said at the beginning of the show today? Where does the the armed revolution get us? If people don't know where we're headed in the first place, All right? You can't walk. You can't walk up to anybody today and ask them straight up where their where their rights come from, where their natural rights come from, what common law is, what tort law and contract law are. They can't answer those questions. If they can't answer those questions, I can tell you the end result. Look up the French Revolution, look into <laughs> it deeply. And look what happened, and look why it happened. It happened right. almost the same time that the American Revolution happened. Actually, the, we sparked off revolutions around the world. And the French Revolution, yeah. their symbol is the is the the guillotine. Exactly, uh -huh. a death yeah, well, a death dealer. Yeah, Our well, symbol is a liberty bell. There's a reason. Yeah. Well, don't tread on me either. You know. I mean, we we our forefathers. They said, hey, our government, we need to keep our government in check. Well, the French were know? saying don't tread on me, too. Yeah, well, I what's, mean... What's the difference, John? Or, uh, Wayne, what's Wayne, it, Dwayne? Dwayne, what's the difference? Yeah. Well, we, we need to keep our government in check. You know, they're trying to uh, rule, uh, you know, tell us we need health care, and we need this, and we can't pray, and all this. You know, I mean, it's, it's time to stand up, you know, and say, hey, we don't like it. We need to get somebody in there. That has has some you know cojones, and you know just to do what the people want. Right, you just regress though. Yeah. Thanks for well, the call. Appreciate it, Dwayne. Four five eight talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Red. Red, what's on your mind? Hey, uh, that opacity law, or what they talk about, saying smoke in the air or whatever, that's a big joke. This winter, that sixty blow snap we had here, I found out. That greenwood, firewood, whatever you burn, will burn clean when it burns hot. But the only thing I can put smoke out with is when I threw a VCR tape in the stove, then I could uh, you could see the smoke from the chimney coming out. Uh -huh. So everything they do is a joke. I didn't burn no railroad ties or rubber tires, but I will next time. Well, you know what, and this is this is one of the things that I I have suggested in the past. I think we need a real tea party, not 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 in the, not a p bunch of people waving tea bags in the air and calling themselves tea party. But what was the original Boston Tea Party? It was an act of vandalism, it right? Was a, it was a tax so revolt. Bags, we should throw our uh, elected officials in the river. Well, what I'm thinking is that maybe if they're not going to listen to us on this smoke issue, that we should bring down a whole bunch of tires and railroad ties. And other items, and just ring the borough building and light it all on fire. <laughs> I'm just saying, great. just a little bit. I mean, paint a mental picture of that. Would that? Would they get the message then? All right, they, they won't get the message no matter what. So it don't matter. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Four five eight talk is the number. That's not our action point today, by the way. Four five eight talk. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Is Ron. Ron, go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Hey, I like your program. Uh, you guys do a good job. Uh, appreciate. Thank you. Uh, the, the thing is, on, on voting in our local, mainly in our local, the federal, I'm a little concerned about the the uh, um, uh, the corruption that goes on. But our local government, we're not going to get more Natalies or Michael Dukes in, unless we vote. And that's the only way I think we're going to clean it up. That's one thing. Secondly, uh, the march on President's Day, uh, part of the, the reason they're marching is because they're, they're tired of unjust wars uh, going to... Uh, uh, die for something that they find out later uh, was a hoax, was was not true. Uh, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, those are my comments. I'll listen to your I'll listen to your comments. Thank you very Thanks. much. I appreciate that. Huh? You know, Josh, I, I, I was a member of the military, mm -hmm. and I was trained to kill people and break things. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that that's that's what you do in the military. And then I went on specifically to get trained as an interrogator, and man, I had a lot of fun with that. However. When I found myself actually deployed boots on the ground in Bosnia, I was doing absolutely nothing that I found that I was prepared to do in terms of my mindset. I was basically sent over there as a glorified babysitter to stop people from killing each other in a land that we had no interest that I could see constitutionally to be in and to be doing. And basically, we were protecting terrorists. We had, I had, you know, based on my 
interviews, which we had to call them, not interrogations. Based on my interviews with people, I knew the exact locations of where Hezbollah was training in Bosnia. Not just Hezbollah, but also, um, what's the other big group out of Lebanon and, and Iran uh, that gets the, the support from Iran? Oh. Because um, I'm, I'm trying to blank on the name right now, but I know that we had them in Bosnia. Uh, anyway, we knew actual terrorists, Muslim terrorists, training in Bosnia, and we couldn't do a thing about it because... We were on the side of the terrorists. Yes, we were there to keep the Serbs from killing the Muslims. Well, it's a, a point of uh, thought would be, can a tyrannical government, which I would say that we have, spread liberty? Well, Only through democracy. We're going to export democracy. It's right up there in the Constitution along with uh, the good and plenty clause. You know, I was thinking back when... Uh, the caller, Josh, talked about the uh, wood smoke deal when he brought up the cops coming in. It's no different than what we were talking about a few weeks ago. If someone off the street came up and told you, you can't, hey, I don't like your wood stove. You tell them, so? If he comes in your house, you'd say, get out of here. But we allow, mm -hmm. with our consent, nine people to decide what we can or cannot burn. Or what we can or cannot use to heat our homes. Yeah, Josh, but they were elected. <laughs> yeah. And as far as revolutions, violent revolutions and stuff like that, the greatest tyrannies are always pe perpetuated in the name of... Wait a minute. The greatest tyrannies are always perpetrated in the name of the noblest causes. Thomas Paine said that. We think we would like to have an armed revolution. But what tyranny would come out of that? We had people recently that advocated, you know, well, we're going to overthrow the government. When it all collapses, we'll be here to keep the peace. We're the peacekeepers. What tyranny would they have brought us? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Talk about tyranny. Whenever people get together and try to decide for everybody else based on their own moral code what everybody else should be doing, you, you end up in, in some real hot water. Right. That was my big problem with the guy that we're talking about is that he he wasn't interested in everybody's liberty. He was interested in forced liberty. Well, and, and, and that's not liberty at all, is it? 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Uh, this is Pat and Delta, Steve, uh, on the March thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a point of contact here in Delta for the uh, Ron Paul uh, deal, and we are having a, a sign waving today. And uh, anyway, on the March thing, I've noticed there's a lot, just it blows my mind this year, the amount of military people, active duty, are coming in, and they're saying, we support Ron Paul, and it is so strong. And, you know, you're right about your points there on the military active duty and how they can't get too political by UCMJ, and there's a gray area there. But um, just kind of to explain what's going on there, uh, from their point of view, from the stories they're telling me, is that they're tired of nobody hearing what they're saying, and we're all sending them to war. And I'm a veteran, not a combat veteran, but I served in the military but a long time ago. But the, what they're trying to tell us is that it's so bad that our foreign policy needs changing, and it needs to be in line with Ron Paul, and they're firmly behind him, and it's gotten so bad that they, they're willing to stick their neck on the line just to get the word out there, you know? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I certainly appreciate their point of view on that because I, I felt the same way when I was in, and I feel the same way now. And by the way, lest it not be said, thank you for your service. Well, and thank you, and, and your program is just terrific. And we're doing some sign waving here for Ron Paul, and there's some a generous man that gave us a, a banner, a big, long banner here that we're using. And, Sweet. And it's great. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> you bet okay, your 458-talk is, is the number. Is you? <laughs> <laughs> we move on to the next call. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Joe. Joe, Joe go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, <clears throat> the name you were looking for was Hamas. Hamas, yeah. Hamas, yes, it was. I got texted that. <laughs> hey, here's an interesting point about Hamas. Uh, we recently... Uh, seized all the assets of uh, Iranian assets in various places on the basis that they were supporting Hamas. What's ironic about that is in publicly, what, this is not under the counter or anything, uh, Saudi Arabia supports Hamas also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and I often wondered why, I know why, I mean, you, we all know why Saudi Arabia is treated differently, but basically they chop off people's hands and heads and, and you know, Things that are just disgusting, primitive, middle-aged stuff. 
And we don't. We never reprimand them. Never say a thing to them about anything. Uh, That's because it's not what it's about. You yeah. betcha. You betcha. Uh, I'll let you go at that. You can. You can follow. That if, you, if you have any more to say about that, I'd like to hear it because I basically am tired of watching our our uh, international relations so contorted. We don't even know what's going on. Right. So. So I guess it begs the question: What is it about? Josh, why, why, why are we targeting Iran right now? Well, yeah, but to figure out why we're targeting Iran, then we have to figure out why we targeted Iraq when we were supposed to be going to Afghanistan, and why we don't target, and Saudi why we Arabia. target uh, targeted Iraq the first time, why we targeted Syria. Yeah, Joe, what we're talking, we we feel that the re- the only reason that we're going after some countries and not the other ones is the use of our dollar for oil. If you use our dollar, you get to stay. If you stray away from the U.S. currency to buy oil, you get taken out. Which, is, which means watch India, because India announced, what, two weeks ago that they were no longer going to be using the dollar to buy oil either. Well, we're not going to touch them. No, we're not going to touch them. Oh, They're that's big. right. But, They've got nuclear weapons. <laughs> but you see, they, 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 India only said that about their uh, trading with Iran. Iran mm-hmm. true. See, that's the point, is now we're having this war cry to take out Iran when you had four or five countries say that they're going to only trade with gold with Iran. So in order to keep our dollar propped up, to keep our economy from collapsing, we're not exporting anything or importing everything. You have to look at Great Britain when the pound, when the sterling was the world's traded dollar. They went to war globally to keep that dollar propped up. Didn't they? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's, right. So why, why, do, why can't we look at history and say, look what, look what global countries have to do to keep their dollar propped? You have the same pattern in every country that we've invaded. Every one of them, if you look into it, has announced that they're going to quit using our dollar and that we destroy them. You know what? Here's something to keep in mind, and maybe we can t- talk about this in terms of an action point. If you do a little research, Google it, and look at the countries that we have invaded just in the 20th century. Look at the, the military interventions from the United States and look at the involvement of U.S. business. Do we ha- Is there a pattern? Because I don't think the pattern is going in and removing dictators to free people. In fact, I think the pattern Especially is... Especially dictators we set up. Exactly. We, ha- we set up more dictators than we have removed. And that's something that, that people really need to keep in mind, especially if they are considering joining the military or allowing their children to join the military. It, I'm not telling you not to. I'm telling you to look into it and to see if you would be okay with okay. that pattern. But we have to spread democracy. Right. <laughs> Constitutionally. Thanks for the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Uh, Gray Wolf. Gray Wolf, go ahead. Hey, yeah, uh, not to. Uh, there's a couple things I like to say, but uh, uh, one of them, yeah, it, it's mainly po- political and, and uh, on what's happening around the world. Uh, in a way, I, I don't. I don't care if Iran has nuclear weapons. Uh, aren't they able to defend themselves just as we are uh, in some aspect of it? Well, that's uh, why we destroyed Iraq. WMDs. You know, so so it's it's just a political go around, it, and what's best, what what the U.S. wants to see out of it, and it's it's fighting and losing battle because it's pissing off a lot of the other countries, and they're not liking the U- United States anymore. And uh, that uh, uh, we're heading downward, uh, and you're going to see it within the next six months that, that how bad it actually is going to get. And uh, it, it, we're going to be hit hard. Uh, there's no other way around it. it, it it's going to come, and it's going to happen, and it's going to happen within the next six months. Uh, another thing that's going to happen that people don't realize or don't care about is that, uh, have you heard of Apophis, Ooh. the meteorite? No, that uh, that was a big thing about 2012. Is that there's, there's a meteorite coming towards Earth that's supposed to hit or come by the Earth, uh, not hit the Earth, so nobody's worried about it. Well, there's magnetic forces, that type of thing that that could happen. I'm not saying that it is, but it could happen, and it could change, uh, add to uh, this 
type of thing, you know, knocking out some sort of uh, electronics, that type of thing, and you know how uh, how that would affect the economy also. Um, and then on the bottom level is, uh, uh, and I'm talking about in state court going in as a jury and the judge telling you how uh, these are the guidelines that you have to go by and that, no, that is not true, and I don't, I don't want people to go by them guidelines. I, I think they should go by the facts and what they know to be true, uh, and that's what they should do on and if a law is there, it doesn't mean that you have to go by that law. It, it is up to you as a jury to find out if that law is constitutional. They can tell you all they want, all day long, that that law is good and just, and you can sit there and say, no, it's not. So yeah, the, the only thing I'd be careful of there is everyone that um, – eyes are open and they see something as in, inevitable, they tend to up the timeline quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I would say six months. Oh, however, I will, I will tell you this. There's a new paper out today. You can see a link to it there on the Drudge Report that says that, uh, oh, we don't expect our sanctions against Iran to work. We are likely to be at war with Iraq, or rather with Iran, sooner rather than later. And Russia and, and China. That, by the way, is an official estimate from the United States intelligence. So... Hmm. Who's been right? We're out of time. Those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. Quit letting government be your liberty. Get out there and learn what liberty is. Let's do without them. Thanks for for being here today. Up next, it's Health Talk, and I will be back again on Monday morning for the Better Breakfast Show at 6 a.m. KFAR Fairbanks, 660 a.m.